call the meeting to order. Morris Grove Public Library Board of Trustees, June 20, 7 o'clock, if we could stand this. Tonight I wanted to talk about uh, committee appointments and typically we would reshuffle the deck but since we've got new folks on board and have yet to really figure out what everyone's talents are, I was going to throw it out to the board to think about this for the next month. We've got a uh, finance committee, a policy committee, and a currently building and grounds committee. Um, who would like to participate on what committee, or if you'd like to step out from the committee or step into it, um, could you send that information to our director over the next month and we'll reset things? Um, yeah, you could send it. That's okay with Frank. And uh, with regards to the Building and Grounds Committee, it was suggested that maybe we rename that a Facilities Committee because it's more encompassing of what we're looking out for. So, something to think about. And that's all I have regarding that. The Treasurer's Report? Okay. Oh, sorry. Were there any public comments? I will. On agenda items. Um, the only significant change that um, you'll see in the uh, treasurer's report is that per last month's meeting, the $101,000 was transferred out of PMA in anticipation of um, using that money to replace uh, two of the furnaces and um, possibly making some um, uh, repairs to the roof. Other than that, um, there's nothing that should, there's nothing of note. Well, actually, in the past, the fact that we're going to replace the roof and we're going to do the purposes. No, no, no. We're talking about our meeting on, two, on Tuesday. The meeting that okay. we had. I just had thought it should be brought up. Yeah, I wasn't here at last month's meeting. I'm not commenting on last month's meeting. I'm commenting on Tuesday's meeting. Anybody has any questions um, over any of the checks or the cash statement or the income statement? And if not, I'll ask if the treasurer's report to be done. Do we have a motion to accept? I'll accept. A second. I'll accept. I'll second. No further comments or questions? And Paul, can you call the roll? Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Goldstein? Yes. Trustee Yellowman? Yes. Trustee Bird? Yes. Trustee Elvis? Yes. Trustee Peters? Yes. And Trustee Noble? Yes. The uh, committee reports I'm not aware of any of this, this month. So uh, turn it over to our director. Um, I don't really have anything to add beyond what was in my written report. Um, so a few things that we are going to discuss are as either under the business or other things that Mr. Tennant has that we need to address. Anything from corporate counsel? 
tonight uh, you have on the agenda the adoption of your program wage resolution, which uh, you adopt the program wages as for the library of the same as the uh, Cook County wages uh, as established by the uh, state uh, Department of uh, Labor. The other thing that you go ahead. I have a question on yes, that. Um, what kind of responsibility do we have to verify? Or do we just have to have any possible bidders saying that they do go along with this? Right. Mm -hmm. What we do is, is when we would prepare a bid, a bid spec, we would just uh, identify that. Um, they would have to uh, comply with the program wages, usually um, um, a copy of our ordinance or a uh, bond resolution would be part of the bid spec. Okay. So you don't need X amount for this and X amount for that kind of person? No. That's if the onus is on them. Right. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And they just certify that they do. No, right. They'll they'll tell you that they do, and then sometimes the uh, if they're challenged, um, then they have to produce their payroll records and stuff like that. But basically, it's, it's word of mouth until someone asks for that. Yeah. And the challenge comes by you know either a, a, a labor union or somebody or some entity that that uh, wants to confirm. So our responsibility is just to make sure that this is part of our contract. That's correct. And the other item we're going to do tonight is our semi-annual review of the uh, closed session minutes uh, for the meetings act. So we're going to be discussing uh, that, and uh, we're going to go into the executive session to discuss to discuss that and we'll take action on that when we come out of the executive session. And that's all I have for tonight. All right, thank you. Um, unfinished business. Our furnace replacement. Uh, I just wanted to point out in your packets, uh, there was a, a letter from Air Comfort that outlined uh, where we could see some possible savings with the furnace replacement. And uh, thank you to our board president for asking for that information. I thought it was really informative that they pulled together for us. So I just wanted to, to highlight if you haven't read it over, you might want to do that with uh, Justin, the engineer from Air Comfort. Uh, spelled out pretty report where we could expect to see some savings with the replacement of the furnaces. So. And if I read it right, if there's a 20-year expected lifespan on the new furnace and we say $4,000 a year in operating costs, pay we pay for our furnaces twice. Right, right, yeah. So that yeah. was a good one. Thank you for that report. I, I appreciate it. Very good. I added that to the agenda because I thought it was something that would be you know, I did ask about that when we were having these conversations when we found out how big they were after they did the building load analysis. And um, I was told that that was not uncommon back when those furnaces were installed um, because they weren't as efficient. They weren't as efficient. People were more concerned with um, square footage as opposed to how many windows something had. Um, certainly, they didn't take into account the number of computers, those kind of, I mean, the, the analysis is so much more sophisticated <coughs> nowadays that they do. And um, you'll also notice, uh, as, as Justin points out in his report, and I think I mentioned it last month as well, that uh, the cooling is not as strong as we need for the main floor. But he said uh, also, that's also not uncommon in older buildings because it uh, they used to be much more concerned with staying warm than staying cool. So. Um, but he did say that it wasn't uncommon to see those larger units in buildings. So I think even he was a little surprised at how big they were. <laughs> so. I, I had a question about carpeting. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how
overseeing a roof replacement project if we had to do that. Uh, Mr. Tennant has also suggested contacting the village to see if there's someone from the village that could help with um, creating an RFP if we need to do that for the roof. Um, so we're still kind of uh, in that phase of things. What we are doing right now is um, just some very basic patching of spots that we know that we have leads to get us through. Um, so that will be a minimal chart. I think $30, $3,500 it was to have them come out and do patching. Um, so that uh, if we didn't move forward on the roof this year, if that didn't come to fruition, we'll at least, you know, we we'll, have, we'll, we'll take care of the leaks so that we don't have leaks in the library. So that's where we're at with that right now. So I just wanted to bring the board to the All right. No business after dark. Um, we are trying some Friday evening programming uh, this summer and we're calling it MGPL After Dark. And so we've got two musical programs uh, scheduled for the evenings of Friday, July 26th and August 23rd. And I would like to ask the board's uh, permission to uh, stay open late on those evenings. It would just be the Baxter Room. The rest of the library will be closed. Uh, and um, yes, so that's a question. Why are we doing it on those two nights? Are we booked every night? Um, in, in terms of the, the There's something going on in the next year. Yes, pretty much. I, I mean, especially during summer with summer reading. Um, the other thing that uh, we've uh, the the public service staff has, has been you know kind of listening to comments from patrons and that kind of thing and trying to look at ways to provide services at a time you know something that families might be able to do or you know people that you know, didn't want to go out to a bar city or to a restaurant or something like that just another uh, another programming option you know just like we're trying to do some of the the trivia nights and those kinds of things just trying to um, some alternative types of programs to see if we can draw some some different um patrons into the library what are the events um they are musical programs both of them yeah um, one is a 12 piece jazz band jazz with band. a jazz band and the other one is called Broadway Babies. It will be uh, Broadway musical numbers. And how are we going to promote this as a new um, alternative for the community? Uh, it will be in New Books and Beyond. That it's in print right now. We'll be posting posters, website. I'm curious to ask what, what the cost will be for the um, the cost should be minimal uh, because most of the staff that would be staying would be a full staff because the rest of the library isn't open. So it's just a couple of people um, who would either normally be here, such as maintenance staff um, or uh, librarians who uh, are salary. And so there's no additional hourly cost associated with that. Um, and because, like I said, the rest of the library will be closed, the, the lights and that kind of thing will all be shut off in the rest of the library. So that I don't anticipate that there would be in the bands. Any measurable? Well, the bands. The bands? The yeah. entertainment. Well, cost the for the performance. Live entertainment? Oh, that comes out of that programming. Comes out of programming. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's just part of it. Yes, yeah, that's already budgeted for, and it comes out of our regular so programming so budget. I, I know if the programs are good, I, I don't think people are adverse to chipping in with it. I went to two of the uh, trivia, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I wouldn't blink an eye if you charged a, right. a team. We yeah. can't charge with the library. We can't charge for library. Well, we can't. No. Yeah. How come other entities in government can't? It's just the function of being a library, I guess. Well, it's just public library. So yeah. is the parks. I mean, but I even if know, a I don't know if that's we've rented a yeah, library I don't, I don't space know, for programs from another organization, and even we can't. Get, we can't bring money in if we're using library space to another organization. Some of that's an actual bylaws of the board um, because, I mean, there are libraries that charge for meeting room space and that kind of thing to businesses and, and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. So, yeah. um, and I know that some I, yeah, libraries will, because it's not only everybody in the public. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, and, and it's just, it's also, it's, it's a commitment that we have that, you know, people are already paying for these services through their tax dollars. And so we're, we're trying to provide those so types of the other. I mean, I'm happy no. with them, but so are all the other. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. Um, you know, there are some things that we do charge for, for, like if we sell flash drives or those kinds well, of things. Well, there's something that's Copies, copies. Something that costs. Interesting. Yeah, right. yeah. So, 
um, but public programming is part of and what the tax our, levy is. Right. And so these are already um, factored in in our regular programming budget. I just budgets, was so. wondering yeah. why one public entity is different than another. This is the United States. States. And, the answer, <laughs> and the only answer is because it is. Yeah. It's pretty much. <laughs> the answer I get it. Because they can. Because they, they can. can. <laughs> Which is can. interesting as <laughs> usual. So, um, so basically, as I said, I'm, just, I'm asking the board's permission to remain open, have the Baxter room remain open on those two Fridays. They can, they'll give donations to the library. Yes, they can make donations to the library. So. Without a tip chart. <laughs> you could always say donations are appreciated. Yes, have yes. donations are accepted. <laughs> yes, we could do that. But so it wouldn't be so bad. It wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> can I make a motion to that effect? That your library will stay open. July 26 and August 23. And do we have a second? I'll second that. Any other discussions? If not, Paul, can you call the roll? Sure. Trustee Elvers? Yes. Trustee Bird? Yes. Trustee Calumet? Yes. Trustee Lansing? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Nova? Yes. Trustee Peters? Yes. All right, we're all settled. All right, our adoption of a prevailing wage resolution. Now, this is something we'll do yearly as they reset this. Everyone had a chance to look it over. And I have a motion to approve. I move to approve resolution 23, 2013-02, uh, establishing other prevailing wage. And you know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I misnumbered it. It's 2013-3. Oh, well, then I will revise my, <laughs> my motion. Yes, yes. Not resolution 2013-03, yes. establishment of the prevailing rate of wages for laborers. And a second that. Second. Okay. Paul, you would call that one out. No. Trustee Bird, yes. Trustee Taylor. Yes. Trustee Goldstein, yes. Trustee Gonzalez, yes. Trustee Novick, yes. Trustee Peters, yes. Trustee Elmers, yes. I, I have a question uh, it's after the fact, but I'd like to refer to our corporation uh, council here. If, if we didn't approve this, what would happen to us? It's sold apart by lots of That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. There's a state statute that will be answering these, not answering the basket, not answering the question. Next item on there was the revision of bylaws, and we don't have anything to look at tonight, but uh, our director was going to give everybody current copies of the bylaws that they could take and look at because there are certain parts that are somewhat open-ended and others that need to be refined to kind of reflect the more modern day library. So it's just something that I want to kind of kick off and get everybody's involvement on. So please read them over the next month. I will, um, I do get a chance to print them off. So before we leave today, I will make sure everyone gets copies. So you should all have copies of the bylaws in your binders as well. We do. Yeah. And they have not been changed in a number of years, so whatever is in your binders is, is the current one. So if everyone's comfortable using those, I don't have to return them okay. unless you want another copy. I mean, and if so, that's not a problem, I just need to do that. You can also find them on the website as well, but I will be happy to make additional copies of printouts for you on this evening. Yes. Can I suggest that we set a time and date for them um, an executive um, committee meeting and maybe if all the all of the members would email you with suggestions they might have that we could get started on it and then have something to present. I mean, just so that we have fine. some way of well, like to sit moving down it forward and getting it done. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I didn't bring my calendar, so I have to reach back up. And then uh, a spending policy. Um, this is actually something that I've wanted to do since I started, and I think the board probably would also like to have something a little bit more clearly spelled out about spending limits and when um, the director needs to, uh, at what point do you uh, 
so the director need to come to the board for approval. Also, um, spelling out the spending policy, even though it's required by law, uh, the uh, going to bid when uh, things are over $20,000 would also be included in that. So what I gave you in your packets was um, just a sampling of uh, a few similar sized libraries and their spending policies just to give us something to kind of take a look at to start and just to outline some of the questions that we might want to think about as we're, as we're, as we're thinking about our own spending policy. Um, so uh, this is, as as Mark has said about the bylaws and the, the community appointments as well, this is, you know, obviously we don't have to come to any kinds of decisions tonight, though I did anticipate that the board would come to some dollar amount decisions and um, I would be happy then to type those up in policy form for approval at the July or August board meeting depending on what changes needed to be made by the month. So there's day in and day out expenses that you would approve because that's what you do. Right. And then there are extraordinary expenses, mm -hmm. and then there's just large expenses when we do repairs. Right. So there's differing levels, different sure. responsibilities. And some libraries treated, you know, I somewhat say the director has authority up to that legal limit. Some, most do not say that. They have some interim uh, level in the, in the middle there. Um, a lot of libraries, some in smaller size or similar size budgets, uh, that limit is either you know, five thousand or seventy-five hundred dollars, depending on um, you know just what their own boards have decided. I I do as I was pulling compiling these together. I do actually like the Park Ridge Public Library. Their policy, I think, that's very clear. Um, that's on page two. Um, very well written. I, I, it's, it made sense, I think, for the running of the library if the board was okay with something like that, or if they wanted to have a little bit more tiered structure, or, you know, um, you know, if you look at Hinsdale, they've got purchases in excess of $3,000, but less they than 20, the and then, board. you know, yeah. purchases yeah. over 5,000, but yeah. less than this amount, yeah. <laughs> and so I, and that to me, we have nothing with this point. Yeah. We do not have a spending policy I, at this point. Because I read through it pretty carefully, actually. <laughs> And circled things here and there that I either liked or didn't mm -hmm. like, and I was just wondering if um, maybe we can come back to the next meeting with something that takes the best sure. out of this. I don't know. If, 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 well, we could discuss it. I mean, what, however the board wants to to to, to treat it. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, mean, I agree with you. I like the part bridge of this. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, and if that's something that the rest of the board feels comfortable, we may start with that. We don't have to approve it today, but we can right. certainly get the foundation established. Yeah, the so policy isn't actually written to approve, so we is, uh, could put into that. To see is five thousand dollars a reasonable number, or should it be a bit more or less? I wouldn't be comfortable with it being more. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I, I thought five especially since that would seem to be the consensus even though there's one here and three. Uh, also thinking of the, the reality of life, things cost that today and you can make it so difficult that the library just would be at a standstill all the time mm -hmm. for things that are really basically considered minor already. Yeah, and what, what, what you also want to consider too is that you don't have to, to revise it too often. I mean, that, that I think is the danger that you run into if you set it too low is that it does start to impact some of the more kind of day-to-day -day expenses. Um, yeah, and that was accounted for in one of these, now if I remember. Hensdale did a lot of exceptions um, though. Yeah, because there are, as treasurer, I guess I should tell you, there are certain contracts that we that we have that will come due once a year, or say um, the, the wind payment for the health insurance is always $20,000. And so obviously that doesn't have to come to the board. Um, things like uh, maintenance contracts, things like contracts for a lot of the things in Kevin's department that have yearly um, re-up fees, uh, the, the IT stuff, um, those are anticipated and budgeted for. I think, I think what we, the point of concerning ourselves with this is for things that are over and above the usual everyday kind of things that travel through the door. Of which there are a number of. And I think we have to look at the word emergency and recognize the fact that if it is an emergency, we've got to do it. 
Oh, that's for the over 20,000, of course. Yeah. Well, and, that's, and then, that's and then it's spelled out in a number of, of them, too, that, you know, yeah. that if something happens and I need to make a decision that, you know, presumably in this policy that the director would have the authority to make that decision because, you know, you have to, <laughs> right, you have I have to, to you know, the right. ceiling's coming in or whatever. Um, and then the board would recognize that they would then have to approve that as the next meeting. And they do all of the policies that do, do you know, outcome. Put do those kinds of stipulations in place. In the emergency, uh, it talks about uh, in excess of 5,000. How far in excess can we go even with an emergency? Well, we can only go up to 20,000. So, um, well, unless it's an emergency. No, 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 you know, if, if, for example, when the flood came, if we were like Glen Ellen, say, and their entire server room in their basement flooded, I mean, they had to do it. It wasn't, yeah, there's no there choice. wasn't a lot of choice. So, um, so I mean, the emergency, if, if in the spending policy we outline, you know, emergencies over the, say, $5,000 expenditure limit, and then, you know, the, emer the, the bigger emergencies are covered in the, in the statute. I, yeah, um, I agree with Barb, though, that there are certain things that um, are in different ones that are good, like from column A and column B. Overall, I do like Park Ridge quite a bit, but the Hinsdale one um, under D4, if unbudgeted, such purchases will need prior approval of the library board. Those would be for absolutely brand new um, things that are unbudgeted. Well, that's for that's actually under purchases in excess of twenty thousand. Are you thinking? Well, of I'm there. Um, oh, we got we're also in, in above as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I. Yeah, that's okay. So you're leading. So four. Over four and two four. four. Yeah, or whatever, or whatever it is. C four. C four. C four. C four. And those those numbers don't correspond because they had other things in there that were. Um, didn't really pertain. They had a lot of other detail that weren't that right. wasn't directly, you know, what the sorts of things that we were considering. Exactly. Um, yeah, I was just talking about that. So yeah, that one sentence. Yep. So, so perhaps um, if, if people have made notes, I would be happy to take them and try to incorporate them in one document so that um, we can we can look at one document uh, for next time, or I can even send that out to the board prior to the meeting. Um, if we, if the board agrees on the five thousand dollar limit, and then including uh, a statement about unbudgeted expenses over that amount, I'm assuming that's what you were talking about, Kathy. Anything over the five thousand? Yeah, if that's, the, if that's, I'm just using that. Number. Oh well, this is this is if totally unbudgeted. That's that one. If it's something totally new. The center of page three, right. where it's just if unbudgeted. Yeah. Well, actually, it's, it's, it's twice. four on the yeah. bottom, too. It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's the same. They, they, they might try in a couple of different. I think it's. Uh, but then under the West Chicago Public Library, what did you guys think of Part B? Uh, more than 5,000, less than 20,000. Um, that we get more of these board things. Remember, even when the trees came down, we had bids there. And that was only a few thousand dollars. There are, are you know, oh, you certain yeah. things that we should, that we would get quotations for. Yeah, quotations for. Yeah. Not so formal like quote as opposed to a so quote. quotes on exactly services. Exactly, quotes. More, yeah, more quotes that the board is aware of things over 5,000 and less than. Less well, I kind of like the concept that the Actually, words under Park Ridge where they call it informal written proposal versus formal. Bids. I, I like the language. Mm -hmm. It was clearer than others just by putting in those two words in for one formal. I'm curious why we don't have our neighbors in here in Skokie, Grandview, Niles. Um, because their budgets are much large, larger, and so they're spending, I mean, they have the same $20,000 limit, but um, you know, a lot of it was uh, responses that I had gotten. I had contacted a number of directors asking if they had spending policies and also looking on their website. I'll be happy to, to ask their directors for them again. Um, you know, it's, most of them are similar to this sort of thing. Like I said, there are a number of libraries that, that say their spending policy is that anything up to 20000 and then you know, that's that seems to be required. But um, 
as I think Kathy or Barbara had mentioned, that so the 5,000 limit seems um, very common, particularly as I said, in library of that size. Um, and then Kathy had mentioned you wanted to include something about getting quotes for costs in between, say, like <coughs> 5,000 and 20,000. Well, it's 5,000 and up at that point, right? Because mm -hmm. at 20, we're well, to do it. Right? Um, I, and, and certainly we try to do that informally anyway. I mean, that's just the standard practice yeah. that we try to do. I do have to say that um, we may want to include language about, you know, uh, requiring getting quotes if, if we can, because quite frankly, there have been a number of things that just in the year that I've been here that we have tried to get free quotes and we can't. People mm -hmm. just won't respond to us. And which seems, you know, I'm like, I want to give you money. Why You're the government that? and you won't pay me. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah. um, so just, I have no problem including that, but we might want to also stipulate that if we don't have three quotes, we just have two, that we can still, the board will still make a decision. Well, at least it's information to work out. Part of, go on, go back. Uh, under Hinsdale, they also have number three, the department had believes a purchase should be made from a certain vendor rather than through price quotes. I think it's valid to look at that and look to improve it. Um, just from experience and background, sometimes that's more important than it did because they know the job was done right, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Park Ridge, it says informal, and then over 20, it says formal. Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. What Number one, well, so number one, secure informal written proposal. Written informal proposals from 5,000 to 20,000. Mm -hmm. Over 20,000, they want formal bids. Mm -hmm. right. Which is more That's of an RFP, where you, you define the scope of the job. They need to bid per. Like the car okay, there, there's a, a difference. Is there a legal, um, there's, I think there's they're there. legally bound on an informal contract? I think, I think this is a little confusing, and I, I would recommend that we might not use that exact wording in our yeah, funding policy, that we might want to say so it's clear. secure RFP quotations versus, yeah. versus RF yeah. versus Quote bids, versus because RFP. that's, I think, legally that quotations is, is not the official bid. Um, mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's when we can do that 5,000 to, to 20,000. Yeah. And then the bid is the when you go through the formal bid process. Formal and then process, which is not a bigger if it's in the formal right. bidding process, you're going to you're going to publish notice of right. bid. I mean, there's all these legal requirements. Right. There's for that. A, yeah, and then you're going to have a good packet for people to pick right. up, and then they're going to submit sealed bids, and you have a bid opening at a particular time, so that you know you'll open up all the bids at the right. same time. Yeah. Whereas the informal is much easier to do. Yeah, you know, you're mail in your mail in your calling three three yeah. you know people this that needs to come right. down. Right. Yeah. who yeah. may or may not return your call. That's right. If you don't mean yeah. We don't, we don't want to tie yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I would I would um, I would recommend we probably would go with the word quotation because I think that or sure. quote because yeah. I think that is um, the other question is where's Helen Plum? That's Lombard. That's Lombard. Yeah. The um, library is named after. And on so under Lombard. number four in Park Ridge, mm -hmm. the sentence that I'd like to add to that one would be something like is in the West Chicago uh, letter F um, that of course, if there's an emergency, you can, you know, mm -hmm. get done whatever you need, but a follow-up call to the president of the oh, board absolutely. should go in, yep. too. And I think you've done that in the past. Right. Okay. So. okay. so I guess, um, like I said, uh, probably it sounds like the, it might be easier if there's other, are there other comments? Did you have, I know you've made significant notes. Mm -hmm. Anything else that we have? Pretty much should cover. Um, I guess the, the question would be, is the board comfortable with that $5,000 limit? And if so, then I can incorporate uh, all of the, the, the things that the board would like to see in our spending policy for review at the next meeting. Yes, I think five and 20 are the two I think numbers. It's <coughs> mm -hmm. to right, well, yeah. 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 More steps. And using Park Ridge as a template, right. and then I'll just making the little, yeah. the little yeah. revision talk of it. Does the board need to vote on that one? No, why don't you just look because the because I went into policy. policy. We'll do it. Okay. We'll prove that policy. Okay. Can I we mean, ask if anything comes up between now and the, the institution of the policy that's between five and twenty? Can we just ask Pam to um, get get a, a quote? 
sure. for those things now. Sure. Okay. Anything further on the spending policy? No, I will work on that and have right. the um, draft policy for the review at the July meeting. Okay. All right, great. Um, our per capita grant came in. Um, yes, you should have found in your packets the letter from Secretary of State Jesse White indicating that our FY 2013 per capita grant came in. Um, directors all over the state were quite shocked. Early. Um, it was very early, so um, I just wanted to let the board know that and I wish that you've got copies in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put it in quick and put it down. It's yeah. directly, yeah. It's yeah. Both, yeah. well, the, the advantage is that I say we got the check, but actually it's direct deposit. It's so yeah. 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 <laughs> so he, it's ours now, they can't take it back. And, well. <laughs> So are we moving ahead with, now do we need a, I know that part of the project for the grant was that we were going to get self-checkout. Does the board have to take any action on that? They probably would because the self-checkout unit would be over a certain amount. I mean, particularly depending on when we purchased it. So um, because this just came in a couple of weeks ago and just with schedules and stuff, I haven't had a chance to start researching that. So right. some of this is going to depend on the cost of that. So since so. that's part of our per capita grant, we have to spend it. We on have it. to we have to spend it on um, things that we have outlined in the grant. And there were other things that were outlined in that grant. I think some early literacy uh, resources for the service department furniture and some other things like that. So I have to go back and look at the actual grant to see what I said we were going to try. Yeah, those were the, those are yeah, the things. Those are the things because you have to actually make a report to the state then saying what you've done right. with that money every year. So, so perhaps for our next meeting we can um, get a little information sure. on, the, on the self checkout to get that going because I know we only have a certain amount of time to spend the money. In. We actually have till. Um, June 3rd, June, June, next we year actually have June uh, 2014. Good year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And the state is usually pretty good about, if you have a valid reason why you might need to extend that out any longer, that kind of thing, they're usually pretty good about that. But yeah, I don't see why we couldn't we could at least done. encumber those funds by June of 2014, if not have them spent. Yeah, so. Something that's not in your business, uh, Pam, you send out an email regarding July 4th. Oh, oh our parade. Um, yes. Parade is, uh, that's a go, isn't it? Yes, uh, the library is marching in the parade. If anyone is interested, we have a banner that we're carrying. So I think it's going to be me and Nancy for sure. Yeah. Natalia, I think, is there. Art has said that he's going to be there. Um, Mark has indicated if his ankles cooperate, he may. They're working, and, and my girls are contemplating it. I would so. love to. So if anyone wants to do that, or you want to bring your families or whatever. Um, What's the latest we can reply? July, July 4th. 4th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a theme for it or anything? Are kids riding bikes or decorating you know, things? Or? We were thinking about that and that got to be um, a little problematic with waivers and mm -hmm. those kind of things with the kids riding the bikes. So um, we are having a new banner printed up with our new logo and we'll be carrying that. Um, we were going to do some 75th anniversary type things, but not, that was not the, to get some of those things printed up was just so cost prohibitive. So How about the drill team thing that they had practiced for last year? I, I think it was too hot to do. It was too hot to do. Yeah, yeah they, they were doing a, that. So she's been, uh, uh, Nancy Brothers has been working. Like snow on it was somewhere. <laughs> it was too hot. They had they had drilled for that uh, yeah. thing, and it was too hot. I will yeah. check with Nancy about that, but she's doing a lot of the coordination of, of that. So, so you should go get an email. Yes, I will let you know. Um, but yeah, if anyone's We're interested, in so. yes. Once I find out all that information, I will let anyone who's interested. If, if you wanted somebody to leave with an antique 1959 Schwinn bicycle. <laughs> You're not going to ride it, but we can no, have it. Well, I'd let more of the kids can ride it. I have a 57 Chevy. Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> the better. Historical Society used to use it in the parade. Yeah, I'd be afraid. I don't want to sign the waiver for that one. <laughs> no, better than a 59. Well, actually, it's hard to take an old car like that in a parade because you go so slow. It, uh, it, they overheat. Yeah, we've okay. done it a bunch we've of years. We've had a lot of cars yeah, overheat in those parades. <laughs> Because I am at the other end. I'm at the beginning of the parade checking people in. So, so yes, I will let uh, the board know uh, as it gets closer, meeting times, and um, almost a date 
um, between time and location. Uh, the fourth, <laughs> I'm pretty sure of the date. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, the parade, it's parade starts at 2.30. The library is closed that day. The library is closed that day. The lineup's around 1. The lineup's, a, yeah, we try to get people in there by, by 1. It's at Lincoln. Like yeah, it's, it's a long uh, frontage. Right. Um, since we're talking about upcoming events, I did also want to remind the board and um, members of the audience. Uh, Reef Fest is this Saturday, and uh, we have a lot of really cool things planned. 12 so till 4. 12 30. 12 to 3 30. 12 30. 12 30. And we'll have Freedom Express. And we'll have the Freedom Express. That's something you had suggested, so yeah. we're really excited about that. We're going to have ice cream from Culver's parked right next. They're going to be at Georgiana. We're going to have some outdoor activities. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. It looks like it should be okay. Um, we are actually going to be opening up the Lincoln Avenue entrance because we're going to have a lot of activities like some storytelling and stuff out on the lawn and there'll be stuff in the Baxter room and then um, we're having a storyteller as well. So it sounds exciting. What was that sign around, around speaking of Georgiana? What was that sign? that looked like it was just put there about no parking right around the, the corner. If you haven't seen um, on the Georgiana, on Georgiana, which is the direction that is, I'm going to turn around. Uh, we had two trees cut down that were on the parkway there. They were diseased, and apparently there were branches that were falling off, and so we called the village, and they were very prompt, within an hour, oh, wow. <laughs> took them down. And the sign was put there so that no one would park, because they were concerned that there were big branches falling off. All the people's no. cars. Oh, so now they can. Yes, the sign is on. Oh, and, okay. Um, yeah, so that was what that was probably what you saw. Okay, so. Good. Yeah, it looks no. a little bare. Don't want people yeah. taken out by trees. Yeah, so that's the thing. Put a no parking sign because we don't want anyone. Branches well, there is a uh, tree project village wide. Mm -hmm. It's a share of the cost of the tree, it's a donation. I'm not sure how it works exactly. It was a replacement parkway. A replacement parkway. Yeah. Well, the ashes. Well, yeah, that's well, part of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Of all these we had uh, two ashes taken up from the front of my house, and we got the village also will plant certain trees for free, but you're limited. I know. I had a choice between a European columnar hop on bean, which I have no idea what it is. Oh, uh, it's actually an iron. Uh, it's a t an ironwood actually grows as an understudy tree in our forests here. Oh, but I don't know what this one was. The other one was a Turkish filbert. Another one I know. I nothing about, about the, 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 They tree. sound all American. We Googled <laughs> it at the Turkish filbert, which is not all American. But there's two Turkish filberts in front of our house. Oh, are there? And uh, uh, when, when the economy fails, I hope I have filberts on my tree. I also like you it's one of my more favorites. Well, as long as we're talking about this, I'd like to commend Claude and his staff for how nice the library looks with the flowers. Yeah, he's done a really nice job. Sure he's done. Done. Yeah, and we'll be sure to pass that on to him. So, yeah, he's done a nice job with that. Any other business? I just wanted to announce if people hadn't seen it, there was an article in the. Uh, Playing a press on the crowd of friends. And I oh, last week. People hadn't right? seen it, I yeah. thought. Yeah, no copy too, but I didn't want to see it. I was going to, I meant to put it in the pockets as well. And it went out before. I thought it was a nice article. Are we going time. to have space and books and sure. beyond to announce the, the redoing of the friends and how people can get involved? Um, get involved. Sure. I, I was, yeah, I, as soon as that information is all finalized, we'll be happy to put that in there. Great. So. I know as of right now, um, if you know of anyone that is interested in joining the Friends, um, Mr. Peters has, has said that I can have, uh, he's asked that they contact him directly because they're still working on membership forms and that yeah. sort of thing. So they just, I do know that they just got their, um, the, the, the checks checking, just came in. The checks just came in, and so they've gotten all the banking stuff straightened out. So um, hopefully they'll be able to move forward with some, some projects that they've been talking about. So um, if anyone is interested, as I said, they can, um, you can refer them to me, and I can refer them to Mr. Peters, and um, but that's what we'll save a little out. space in the in the next books and be not you know right, right. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely because by that time too that I would imagine that we'll have the membership forms and stuff exactly good deal and can we have membership forms on the front desk or available great all right so now we move on to any public comments on non agenda items. Eric Potter, 740 yes. Foster Street. Welcome back, I guess. 
Um, I had a nice sit down casually with the mayor on Monday. If you don't know, he wants uh, communication and economic development to be like his focus. So we were talking, and I actually had a conversation with Nancy on Saturday, if you guys saw us at the farmer's market, um, starting to utilize things that I've been sending to you guys for literally like four or five years. You know, he really wants to jump on communication, particularly the Facebook page, and then intermingling that with Twitter, and then using other social media. There's a gentleman from District 69 that's actually moving from Niles Township to District 63, my alma mater. Um, and he's going to be like tripling the size of the kids that he's going to be, I guess, utilizing different technologies. But the thing is, is like if you have Facebook and you happen to monitor my page, um, you embed or you basically put a link onto it. And then what happens is like a little one or two sentence byline comes on and an image pops up. But when I take Event Keeper, it just pops up Event Keeper, you know, .org or whatever the, the link is. It doesn't necessarily populate a image, and and the, and the force that's driving behind that is smartphones. So if I was to take, let's say, like um, you know, the agenda and the audio for this meeting because I publish everything factual, it'll just pop up an image I have from my website off of the audio link. But with Event Keeper, it doesn't pop up an image. So let's say that there's an activity for toddlers two to four, and I want to promote it. I want to populate something. When I put that link up off of your site on the bottom left-hand corner, nothing comes up. So it's kind of a challenge, I guess, for Kevin in the IT department, because it's a lot more work here. But we're going to try to get everybody together in all the school districts, of which there's seven, the park district, the library, and the village, um, try to orchestrate with Boyle Wong IT at the um, village and just start getting everybody to start sharing stories and just populating ideas and you know Rick Hambick knew with Pioneer Press taking his stories human interest if it's the library put it on the library page if it's the park district put it on the park district page if it's the village put it on the village page and then we can all just start sharing in between us start garnering more likes or more friends on our pages and just promote more growth you know and then it drives more people to move here which is real estate transfer tax, which lowers our taxes, and et cetera, et cetera. And the, and the more we bring to the um, industrial end of town, then the more restaurants you're going to see, because then you're going to have to feed the people that are working here you know, in the morning on the way to work and lunch and hopefully possibly after dinner. So there's going to be a master plan behind it. I'm just going to kind of show the mayor and Doyle what I'm doing. And like I said, hopefully they can work with Kevin and IT and, you know, figure something out because, like, when I talked with Nancy, she said focus on like these three or four things over the next couple months and promote those things hard. But then, like today, I got an email from her, and I literally took like probably ten minutes of my time just editing, just text that she had sent me, just to format it. So there's got to be a way, and again, it probably relates to the woman sitting next to me who does a phenomenal job, that we can start putting more images up and start populating your new logo and. Like I said, getting more people to come and being engaged. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to take time. But again, hopefully everybody can come together. So All right. just something to think about. OK. Thanks. OK, we're going to go into executive session. <laughs> Read in number five. Can I have a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion that the board go into executive session for the discussion of meeting minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the open meetings act. This was the section two C twenty one of the open meetings act. Thank you. And can I have a second? Second the motion. Any discussion? If not, Paul, would you call the roll? Trustee Elders? Yes. Trustee Bird? Yes. Trustee Kellerman? Yes. Trustee Goldstein? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Elder? Yes. And Trustee Peters? Okay, yes. motion carries at seven. All right, we are back um, at 819. So, point 14, the semi annual review closed session minutes and a determination of release and destruction of closed session recordings. Uh, do I have a motion? I move that the board authorize the destruction of the verbatim recordings of all closed session meetings held prior to December 1st, 2011. The 
board having determined that written minutes of all such meetings exist which have been approved by the board except for the following meetings the meetings of october 14 2010 and november 11 Which recordings will be retained? I'll second that. And second, any further discussions? If none, Paul, would you call the vote? Trustee Kelbeck? Yes. Trustee Goldstein? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Novick? Yes. Trustee Peters? Yes. Trustee Berg? Yes. And Trustee Albers? Yes. So now I need a motion for. I move that the board, having reviewed the executive session minutes through May 30th, 2013, finds a need for confidentiality still exists to the following minutes, and the information within these minutes remain confidential. For January 14th, 2010, January 13th, 2011, July 7th, 2011, July 14th, 2011, July, uh, October 13th, 2011, December 8th, 2011, January 12th, 2012, February 9th, 2012, and May 10th, 2012. And can I have a second? Second. It's a tie. <laughs> we'll have to. <laughs> Any further discussions on that? If none, would you? Call the roll. Trustee Goldstein? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Lovers? Yes. Trustee Peters? Yes. Trustee Kellamack? Yes. Trustee Bird? Yes. And Trustee Albers? Yes. And, and we've got the last one right. for the remaining. I move that the board release the closed session minutes of September 11th, 2000. I'm sorry. June 11, 2012, June 14, 2012, and uh, October 11, 2012, along with all of the Director Search Committee executive sessions. December 27, 2011, January 4, 2012, March 16, 2012, March 22, 2012, April 5, 2012, April 10, and 11, 2012, April 25th and 26th, 2012. And for, as the, as the uh, need for confidentiality for these minutes no longer exists. All right. And a second? Second. Any further discussion on this one? None. Paul, would you call the roll? Trustee Elders? Yes. Trustee Bird? Yes. Trustee Kellerman? Yes. Trustee Goldstein. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Yes. Trustee Novick. Yes. And Trustee Peters. Yes. I would ask that the board return all copies of the minutes to me for the instruction. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, not the ones that are not the ones that we've agreed yeah. to release, but all of the ones <laughs> that yeah, yeah. Yeah. if you yeah. want to have copies of those you may. Yeah. But uh, yeah. others can get it. I'll take them all, if that's fine. Yeah. They'll be on the, the website if anyone needs to see them. They'll be just here. We have the, the, the ones that we need on Yes. Yes, I do. No, I do keep copies at home, you understand. <laughs> all right, so uh, we got a motion. Oh, yeah, yeah, more paper here. I have right. so, so, a anyway. motion that we adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Second, all in favor. Uh, I, I didn't make copies of the final video.